We continue talking about data filtering in Grasshopper and in this tutorial we're going to focus on creating random patterns. I'm going to begin where we have left in the previous exercise. We have created mesh surface and then deconstructed that mesh to extract its vertices. So this is the part that we're going to be using here as well and I'm going to delete all the unnecessary parts of the definition. All the components that we are focusing on in this tutorial are located under sets sequence. So we're going to talk about random reduce, jitter and random. Let's begin with the simplest one, which is random reduce. This component has three inputs. It requires a list to be reduced randomly, the reduction value, which is the number of items to be removed from the initial list. And then we also have an option for seed value seed value controls the change of the items that are chosen to be removed from the initial list. Let's connect mesh vertices to the list input parameter and to determine the reduction value I'm going to use short calculation. First I'm going to go under sets list and choose list length component to evaluate the number of items I have. I can also grab a panel to see the output in my case it's uh, 169. And then I'm going to go under math operators and choose division. I'm going to divide this list length value using a number slider floating number parameter from one to three connect to B input. And now we have the result from the division. So let's connect that result to the reduction input. I'm also going to turn off the preview of this part of the definition so we can see the output. I want to use additional geometry for visual purposes. I'm going to go under surface primitive and choose center box component. As soon as I drop the component on canvas, you can see green box in the Rhino viewport. By default, center box component uses Rhino world X, Y planes origin point as its center point. In this tutorial, we are not going to change the plane. We're only going to change the position of the origin points of these planes. And we're also going to change the size of the box, meaning X, Y and Z inputs. I'm going to use the panel for that and I already know the size of the box that I want to have. You might need to experiment with yours. For the location of the base planes, we're going to use the reduced list of vertices. As we connect, we get an orange wire. And it's not a big deal. It's only to signal us that the output stream here is empty. And this is because the reduction number is too high. When we change the division B input value, we are starting to see the output list filling in and the random boxes popping up in the Rhino viewport. The last input in the random reduce component is seed value. One thing that I want to emphasize about the seed value before moving forward is that if we would have completely the same input data and then the same seed value, the result would always be the same. So you could say that this is a sort of pseudo randomness. I'm going to again use a number slider to define this input and it's going to be integer numbers from one to thousand. I'm going to connect the seed value and then I'm also going to turn on the preview for the vertices so we could see the distribution of boxes along these vertices. And finally, for the visual purposes, I'm also going to apply custom purple color to these boxes. So this is it for the random reduce component. Let's move on to the next one. Let's go under sets, sequence and choose random component. Random component generates a list of random numbers within numeric domain and it requires three inputs domain of numeric range number of random values within that range and then it also has seed option to generate variety of combinations i want to generate random size boxes which means I need to generate random values for the X, Y and Z inputs for the center box component. Let's begin with range input. I'm going to use a panel for that and I'm going to type in from 0 0.1 to 0 0.8. This is the size limit for the boxes. Let's move on to the second input and I want the number of random values within the range to match the number of vertices that I have in the initial list. To evaluate the list length, I'm going to go under sets, list and choose list length component. And then input to construct mesh output vertices and then list length output to the number input for the random component. 
And finally, let's connect randomly generated values to the X, Y and Z inputs. For the origin points uh, of the base planes, we're also going to use vertices. I'm going to turn on the preview for the center box component and turn off the preview of the deconstruct mesh component. Here, I also want to use a more appealing custom preview. So I'm going to delete unnecessary color swatches and I'm going to use gradient. And I'm also going to right click on it and choose another preset. Let's pick the one with a lot of colors. So let's remember how the gradient component works. It requires the lower limit and the upper limit of values to distribute colors. So this is the range and we have created the range with the panel over here. So from 0 0.1 to 0 0.8. So we want to color these boxes using gradient based on their size. And we need to deconstruct the domain to extract the lower and upper limit values. I'm going to first try connecting the start of the domain to the lower limit and the end of the domain to the upper limit. And the T parameter takes all the values within the domain. So here we need to input the output values from the random component. Let's connect the gradient output to the custom preview material input. And I'm also going to turn off the center box component preview. And I would actually prefer that the largest boxes would be red. So I need to reconnect the end of the domain to the lower limit and the start of the domain to the upper limit. So the last thing I need is a seed value. I'm going to use an integer number slider ranging from 1 to 1000 for that. And again, the same as with the previous component, if we have completely the same input data and the seed value is the same, we're going to get the same result. But we could also use random component a bit differently here. We could generate a random list of Boolean values. I'm going to delete the parts of the definition that we're not going to be using and I'm also going to turn on the preview for mesh vertices. Let's begin by defining the range. I'm going to use a panel for that and because it's going to be Boolean values, I'm going to Define bounds from 0 to 1. Connect the panel to the range input. And then we also need the number of these random values within the range. So I'm going to just make a copy of the panel. And because I want to first investigate this binary option, I'm going to start with number 2. The output values are not going to be box sizes. We also need to disconnect x, y and z inputs from the center box component. And let's also grab a panel to investigate current output. The numbers in the panel are floating numbers, so they are not straightforward Boolean values. But if we right click on the random component area, there is an option to choose to output integer numbers. And if we choose that option, then we get 0 and 1 in the list. It's important to know that with random component, if we change the seed value, we might get only one of the binary options. So we could have 1, 1 or 0, 0 in the output list. What I actually want is the number of Boolean values to match the number of vertices in the initial list. To do that, I need to choose list length component, connect the vertices and then replace the number input. Now we have generated random pattern of 1 and 0 matching the number of vertices. To filter the list of vertices based on Boolean pattern, we need to use another component. I'm going to go under sets, lists and choose the dispatch component. We're going to use vertices as the initial list and random output as Boolean pattern. For visual purposes, I'm going to create another set of boxes. So we have two sets of boxes and I'm going to connect A output to one of the center box components and B to another one. And I'm also going to add different colors and different sizes to these sets of boxes. And don't forget to turn on the preview if you need to. So the definition works fine here. The last thing I want to talk about is the dispatch output proportions. And for that, I'm going to use param viewer. So the way we are using the random component now, we can be certain about the sizes of boxes, but not about the number of boxes in each of these lists. So if I change the seed value, pay attention to the param viewer. You can see that the number of items in each of these lists changes randomly. This is one of the main aspects that we're going to be discussing when comparing the random component to the jitter. So I'm going to leave this random part and just disconnect its output values. And now we can go under sets, 
sequence and choose the jitter component. I'm going to turn off the custom preview and let's focus on the jitter. Jitter component randomly shuffles a list of values. It requires three inputs, a list to shuffle. In this instance, we're going to use Boolean values, shuffling strength, which is a floating number from zero to one, and then the seed value to generate a variety of combinations. Let's begin with the list input. In order to generate a list of Boolean values matching the number of vertices that we are working with, we're going to use another component. So under sets, sequence, let's pick repeat data component. And this component requires two inputs, pattern to repeat and the length of the final pattern. So for the length of the pattern, we're going to use again list length component. And for the pattern to repeat, we're just going to right click on the input and choose to set multiple data items. And I'm going to type in true, false, and then choose to commit changes. I'm going to grab a panel so we could see the output. And we have repeating true and false values, true and false pattern, until it reaches the number of items that we need. So the next step is to shuffle these Boolean values using the jitter component. So let's connect repeat data output to the list input in the jitter component. The next input parameter for jitter component is shuffling strength. If you right click on the component and choose help, you will find short description about this input as well. And in our case, in this instance, it doesn't make a lot of sense manipulating jitter strength. So we're going to keep it at the default value of one. And finally, for the seed value, I'm going to use a copy of previously used number slider. The jitter component outputs shuffled values and also a list of original indices of these shuffled values. So let's pick shuffled Boolean values and connect to the dispatch component pattern input. And also turn on custom preview for the boxes. OK, so pay attention to the param viewer output. The important part here is that we are just shuffling two sets of boxes on the vertices and we are not randomly changing the number of items in each of these lists. And we can again compare this output to the output of the random component. Let's have a look at another example. I'm going to first delete the parts of the definition that we are not going to be using. And then notice that I have already created the third set of boxes with additional custom preview color. In this example, I'm going to use a panel to input the pattern to repeat and it's going to be numerical pattern. So let's say 0, 1 and 2 and let's input. And as you can see in the output panel, uh, this is not exactly what I wanted to get. And this is because we need to right click on the initial pattern panel and choose to turn off multi-line data option. And this time we get a list of values as intended. I'm going to copy the panel so we can see the jitter output as well. Next step is to filter data. We must add one more component. In this case, we're going to use the sift pattern. So we want to sift the list of vertices. So let's connect initial list of vertices to the list input and then jitter values as a numerical sift pattern. We get an orange warning. It means that we need to add additional output streams and then connect these separated streams with the center box components accordingly. Don't forget to turn on custom preview if you need to and we're done. So in this example, we can create as many sets of boxes as we'd like and we can also define the exact box size for each of these sets. And by changing the seed value, we also have some control over the random shuffling. It's time to pause the video and try answering the question how to shuffle boxes divided into a certain number of groups and have randomly generated box dimensions for each group. I'm going to start by deleting the unnecessary components and turning off the custom preview for the box. Now let's go under set, sequence and grab the random component. I'm going to use the panel to define the range for box sizes. To define the number of groups, I'm going to use a number slider with integer values from 1 to 5. Let's also add another number slider for the seed value. 
I'm gonna group this part and add a short description using a scribble. So in this part we are generating a short list of random values and we're gonna use these values to create groups with equal size boxes in each group. We need to use random output values as a pattern to repeat and connect them to the repeat data component. The next step is to connect the shuffled values to the x, y and z inputs in the center box component. By doing so we are creating a box for each generated random value. And finally we need to connect vertices to the center box component base plane input. I need to turn on custom preview to see the boxes and for a more appealing preview I'm gonna again use the gradient. I'm gonna adjust its colors and add one more color node. And let's color these boxes based on their dimensions. So we already have the domain for that, but we need to deconstruct that domain to extract values for the lower and the upper limit. And for a list of values along gradient range, here we're gonna use the jitter output. Let's connect the gradient to the custom preview component and we're done. So in this definition, we can shuffle around groups of boxes and generate random box size for each group. So this is it for this tutorial. Keep learning and I will see you in the next one.